Hey everyone, on today's video, I'll be sharing 15 spring Dollar Tree DIYs that I've done. These projects are some of my personal favorites, so I hope they bring some fun spring inspiration to your home. I always love making little wooden trays or crates. So for this spring themed DIY, I grabbed a couple of these little wooden bunnies from Dollar Tree. This plank, which I trimmed down to nine inches, it was originally 12 inches and six bamboo sticks, which I purchased on Amazon. I add some glue on the ends of the plank and then I adhere the wooden bunnies on each end like so. For extra support and strength, I glue a tumbling block on each corner. I'm going to glue three bamboo sticks on each side, going along with the curve of the bunny. So I measure and mark them and trim them with my miter shears. Then I glue them on the sides, spacing them out evenly. To make sure there's enough space to place some candles or little pots or vases, I make sure not to glue the bamboo sticks too close to the bottom or the top. I glue them on both sides and look how adorable this looks. This actually looks really beautiful with just the raw bare wood. You can definitely just seal it with some protective finish and you're all done. But I wanted to add some stain to it to give it a rustic finish. I'm using Early American from Verathane. If you are going to be staining, make sure to give it a little sanding, especially around the sides, because that area is a little rough and it's going to soak up a lot of stain. You can also paint the bamboo a different color or add some stenciling on the bunny or even Mod Podge some beautiful spring napkins onto them. But in the end, I really love how this turned out. I'm going to be making a thick two-sided wooden egg decor piece with one side showing the wood grain and the other side this floral pattern. I'm not going to be using these holes on top so I add a little spackle to cover them up. The white has a bit of a light gray tone to it so to not let that white spackle stick out, I'm just lightly brushing over the whole egg with some paint that matches. For the other egg, I'm going to paint the back side with the paint. Once the paint has dried on the wood shape that has been painted on the back, I'm going to place the napkin on top and I'm just seeing which part of the napkin I want and then I cut that out. The napkin has two layers so I remove the bottom layer, then I apply a layer of Mod Podge on top of the egg, making sure to cover the whole surface. I carefully place the napkin on top, smoothing out any lumps. While that's drying, I want to distress the other egg, so I start with a sanding block, sanding around the edge, but then I switch to a coarse grit sandpaper. I really like the scratch marks it made. To make the egg thicker, I'm going to place one egg in front of the other with some blocks in between to give it some depth. I'm going to use about 35 tumbling tower blocks. You can use more or less, and I'm going to deepen the color of it with some Waverly Antique Wax. Then I apply that with a damp cloth. Once the wax has dried, I'm going to glue four blocks together side by side, and this is going to make the base to help the wooden egg stand up. I turn the egg over so that the back side is facing up, and I apply glue on the ends of the glued blocks. I place that on the bottom. You want to make sure it's flush with the bottom of the egg when it's standing up. Then I just take a block at a time and I glue it along the edge of the shape. I space them apart about a little less than the width of a tumbling block. You can definitely glue them closer together or farther apart. I wanted this to be double sided with both sides showing that white wood grain, but since the egg wasn't symmetrical, which I later found out, I couldn't glue them back to back, but I didn't want the back to go unused which is why I decided to Mod Podge that floral napkin so that no space is put to waste. Once I glued down the last piece, I put it aside for a bit, I just give it a minute to dry. So I grab the other egg that's already dried completely and I start cleaning it up. I use a sanding sponge to remove any excess napkin that's still sticking out. I just sand downwards along the edge and it comes off really easily, leaving a clean and smooth edge. 
All right, so to put this together, I start by putting some glue on the ends of each block. Honestly, I couldn't even imagine trying to do this part with hot glue. I don't think I'd be fast enough, so I use wood glue which will hold this whole thing together even better. I place the other half on top like so, and I just make sure it's placed evenly and it actually fit together nicely. I really like the way it looked already, but I wanted to add some words on it. I had this hello word from a prior project, so I wanted to do a similar one with the word spring. These wooden letters are from Michaels. To match, I paint them white, and then I get a popsicle stick and trim it to fit spring, and I apply some Waverly antique wax with a damp cloth. I wanted to add a border behind the popsicle sticks, so I trimmed down some Dollar Tree wood planks or slats, just slightly bigger than the popsicle sticks. I paint them with this beautiful lavender color from Hobby Lobby, so I apply a couple coats and once it's dried, I glue the popsicle sticks on top. Now at this point, I really wasn't sure if I liked it with or without the word. Either way, it looks really nice, but in the end, I decided to just put the word spring on top. I really love how this turned out. I will be using this really cool wooden letter board from Dollar Tree. It's got a handy little rope on top for hanging, which I will be removing. And the best part, it comes with a whopping 124 letters, so you can create whatever seasonal phrase you want. I'll also be using this five gallon paint store stick. So first I measure the length of the board and I add half an inch more to it. With a mother box and saw, I'll be cutting two to that size. I'm going to be gluing these to the top and bottom of the board. I turn the board over and remove the rope that's stapled on the back and I just use a stable remover to take those out. I'm going to run some glue along the top of the board. After that, I'll turn the board over and glue it right in the center of a paint stick. You can also add a little bit of hot glue to help hold it in place. Once that's done, I'll repeat the same process on the other end, applying glue on the edge and adhering it to the trimmed paint stick. If you want to add more support, you can glue a tumbling tower block on the bottom back as well. I clean up any glue that has seeped out before it dries. I've already sanded and lightened the ruler marks on the top, but I want to make sure they won't show through, so I'm going to sand it down even more. I'm going to be painting some areas of the board with this beautiful antique gold from Folk Art. With a small brush, I paint the inner borders. You can also use pastel colors to really make the board pop. I think that would look really nice as well. Then I paint the top and bottom paint sticks that I glued earlier. And this will give the board a more polished look. I also paint the edges of the borders where the letter tiles go in. And to avoid getting any paint on the board, I place a strip of cardstock in the slots. I also paint the sides of the board as well. I'm loving how it's looking so far, but as I look at it from the side, it's looking a little too thin for my liking. So to fix that, I'm going to grab a bamboo stick and measure the height between the two paint sticks. And I trim it down with my miter shears. And I'll make two of these. I paint them gold to match, front and back, and I make sure to keep one side edge unpainted, which I'll be applying glue on. I turn the board on its back and apply a little bit of glue on that bamboo stick edge that was left unpainted and I place it down on the edge of the board like so. And look at that. What a difference that strip of wood made. I'm going to add some embellishments on the board. I'm going to be using a couple of these beautiful lavender from this bundle I purchased at Target. I'm also going to add some of these cute wooden roses. I got these at Dollar Tree. They are so adorable and I'm going to use three of them. I arrange the roses in a triangle with the flowers facing out, and then I glue them in place. Next time, I might try painting them with some diluted acrylic paint. I think that would look really nice. And honestly, I'm kind of regretting that I didn't do that this time. But you know what? They still look really adorable natural. Next, I pick out a couple lavenders and I pull out the branch, and I just tuck them inside the flowers, securing them with a little hot glue. I add a couple more to make it look more full, but before I add even more, I want to make sure I have enough space for the letters. 
so I rip out the letters that I need. Because it's spring, I'm going to spell out every bunny welcome, which thankfully should fit perfectly on the board. And then I just add a few more lavender and I am done. This letter board turned out so adorable. I love that you can stand it up and you can keep it up all year round. So for this project, I'm going to be making a super cute spring wooden bead garland. I wanted to have different sizes and textures of wood to really make the garland pop. I'll be using the square bead garland from Dollar Tree along with some round beads. These are two different sizes and I got these on Amazon. And I will also be using these round wood slices from Dollar Tree as well. I'm going to be drilling a hole right through the wood slices. Instead of holding them directly, I'm going to hold them with this clamp. And with a small drill bit, I'm using a 1 8 inch, I drill through the wood. You really don't want to go too thick with the drill bit, otherwise the wood may crack. And I'm going to drill through five of these. I will be using the string from the square garland, so I untie the ends and remove the beads. I'll be attaching a tassel on one end of the garland. I wrap some jute twine around my glue bottle, which is the size that I want. You can also just wrap it around your hand as well. And I wrap it about 20 times. I slide it out and then on top I place a lace ribbon, which I'll trim down later. I cut out a piece of jute string and I tie a couple knots on top. And then I flip the knot over so that the knot is hidden. Then I tie the end of the string from the garland around the top loop as well, leaving a couple inches of the shorter end. You can trim that out, but I'll be concealing it later. Then I cut the bottom loop like so. I take a small strip of the ribbon and I hot glue that around the top of the tassel about an inch from the top. And then I just trim the bottom of the tassel so that everything is even. I'm going to paint the wood slices with some green acrylic paint. This is grass green from Folk Art. I really don't want it to be too opaque, but more like a wash, so I dilute the paint with a little bit of water. On the other end, I'm going to be tying this wooden carrot from Dollar Tree. I'll be using this orange acrylic paint from Dollar Tree, and I mute it down with a little bit of light gray. As I'm brushing this on, I kind of didn't like how thin the wood was, so I decided to thicken it up by gluing another carrot to it. You can actually glue three together. I think that would have looked even better. Then I paint the top of the carrot green a beautiful olive color. I give it a little sanding with a fine grit sanding sheet all over to dull down the paint and especially the edges. Once that is done, it's time to put everything together. I string through the beads, kind of alternating with the round and the square, and then spacing out the slices evenly. I tie the carrot on the end, concealing that extra string inside the beads, which you can also just snip off. And with that, our garland is complete. I'm really happy with how it turned out, especially with the different shapes. I love it. Now this next DIY project is a great complement to the first one we just did. I'm going to be using the bunny on this Dollar Tree sign. I'm going to paint the bunny with this lilac paint from Folk Art. I want to add some texture to it, so I add some baking soda to the paint to thicken it up. So I paint that on the bunny using a foam brush. I also paint over the galvanized metal ear. After I apply the first coat, I'm going to add a second layer, this time with a little more baking soda mixed in. So I brush that on in sections until the bunny is completely coated. I'm really loving the texture of the paint. I want some of that metal peeking through, so I just brush out some of that paint. To make the base, I'm going to be using some scrap wood. 
I'll be gluing this piece a one by two on top of this piece, a five gallon paint stick that's slightly bigger. I will be drilling a hole on the wood to fit this wooden dowel. The dowel is 3 16th of an inch, so I'm using a drill bit that's slightly wider. After drilling the hole in the center, I hot glue the wood together. I paint the wood with the same lilac color, and then I sand down the edges to distress. I place the dowel in the hole, and it actually fits nicely. I didn't need to add hot glue to hold it in place. I determine how high I want the bunny to be on the dowel, and then I trim it down. I add some hot glue to the top of the dowel, and then I place the bunny in front of it. You can turn it over and add more hot glue to secure it even more. I lightly brush some of the paint on the dowel. This turned out so adorable. I really love the color and the texture. I just love how it turned out. I'm going to be turning this adorable little MDF house into a customizable letter board. Dollar Tree carries an assortment of vinyl and glitter paper and today I'm going to be using this adorable floral pattern. I'll also be using a couple packs of these wooden farmhouse letter tiles and tumbling tower blocks. The first thing I do is remove the glitter sticker on the top of the house. It's made out of foam so it does come out easily. I take out the roll of vinyl. It does have a sticky back, so no gluing needed. I place the house on top and I trace that all around. And then I cut it out. To apply, I start at the bottom. I like to peel off a little bit of the backing on the bottom and then fold it down. And I just match the bottom edge of the vinyl to the MDF board and then peel off the backing while pressing down on the vinyl. I make sure there are no air pockets where the vinyl meets the roof and then I remove the excess vinyl with a craft knife. I seal the edge with a sanding sponge. I sand downwards all around and that gives the house a nice polished look. Next, I glue the tumbling blocks together. First, I glue three blocks together end to end, and this will go on the bottom of the house. Then I glue two together, and this will go in the middle. I stain the blocks with Minwax Dark Walnut. I do want to keep it dark to match the strips of wood on the roof. Once that dries, I apply hot glue on the side of the set of three blocks and I place that towards the bottom of the house like so and I make sure it's flush with the surface. Then I glue the two blocks in the middle. I bought a couple packs of these wooden tile letters at Dollar Tree. They came with 26 letters. And I spell out our home and display them on the house. This house came out absolutely adorable and I love that I can display different words on it and change them out whenever I feel like it. Black metal wheel wreath ring from Dollar Tree. This measures about 14 inches in diameter. I picked out some florals and stems for this wreath. These I got at Michael's and the flowers are from Target. I'll also be using the strip of wood that's long enough to go across the wheel. You can also use a five gallon paint stir stick. I'll also be using some jute twine. This one's from Dollar Tree and some floral wire. I'm going to tie the wood on the wheel and I make sure it goes horizontally across. I take some jute and wrap it around the wood and the wheel like so. I turn the wheel over and tie a couple knots to secure it in place. For extra support, you can also apply some hot glue on the wood and wheel. This next part is really easy. I take the flowers and position them opposite one another. I also bend the stems to match the curve of the wheel. I'm going to glue the flowers onto the wood. 
so I just add a little hot glue on the stems of the flowers and glue that in place. I'm leaving a little space in the center where I'm going to place a bow later. So next I take the greenery stems and attach that on the ends. This helps to create a fuller look and really makes the flowers stand out. To make sure they stay in place, I add a little bit of hot glue and then I use some floral wire to secure everything together. I add a pop of color with some lavender stems and I stick them into the greenery to give it a nice contrast. To make sure they don't fall out, I secure them in place with a little bit of hot glue. Then I add a little more greenery where I think it's needed and this helps to create an even fuller and more lush look that really brings everything together. I'm going to make a bow using this wired burlap ribbon that I picked up from Walmart. First, I'm going to pull out about five to six inches of ribbon and gather it at the top, which will become the center of the bow. The bottom part of the ribbon will be the tail. Next, I form a loop by bringing the ribbon towards the back center and then pinching it all together. This will be the right side of the bow. I move the tail to the side. Then I form another loop on the opposite side gathering it towards the center and twisting the ribbon. I repeat this process to form another loop on the opposite side and continue until I have the desired number of loops. I then form a small center loop and then I just adjust the loops to make sure everything looks even. To secure the bow, you can use a twist tie or pipe cleaner or a zip tie and I just run that through the small loop and secure it in the back. And that's it. Your bow is now complete and ready to use. Next, I'm going to be using this Dollar Tree wood plank, which comes in a pack of six. First, I'm going to paint the plank white with some Apple Barrel acrylic paint. I brush that on all over, and then I sand it a bit with a coarse grit sandpaper. Then I'm going to be using the stencil from Dollar Tree as well. I'm going to be using the part that says it's good to be home and I center that on the plank. I tape the sides with some painter's tape so that it won't move around and I'm going to be using this dark brown chalk paint from Hello Hobby. It's called Cafe Noir and I'm going to apply it with a small round foam brush. I load the brush with some paint and I make sure to dab out any excess paint and then I apply it lightly, pouncing it on the cutout as well as in circular strokes. I carefully remove the tape and stencil and I let that dry a bit. Then for some dimension, I dab the edge of the plank, especially the corners, with the dark paint. I just want to add a hint of dark on the corners, so I'm going very light-handed with this. Then I glue the plank towards the right side of the wood strip. I add some burlap ribbon on top to hang, and the spring wreath is done. I love how it turned out. this buffalo check bunny garland that I got from Dollar Tree. There are about six bunnies on it and I'm going to cut out and use three of them. I turn them over and remove the staples on the back. I'm going to wrap the bunnies in jute cord and I'm going to hot glue that on there. I make sure to leave about 6 or 7 inches in the end, which I will come back to when I am done to wrap up and close up the bottom. So I apply the glue and I wrap the cord around while pushing it down to make sure there aren't any spaces. When I get to the base of the ears, I wrap them one at a time and when I get to the top, I snip off the cord. And then I wrap the other one starting at the back. I do look at it to see which side I prefer and that side will be the front. So I just continue wrapping until I get to the top and then I snip off the cord. After that, I finish off the bottom like so. Then I wrap the other two. I'm going to glue the bunnies on this one foot by one and a half inch wood. You can get these at Dollar Tree or any craft store. 
but definitely a whole lot cheaper if you get them at a hardware store like Lowe's or Home Depot. I'm going to paint the wood in this gorgeous blue chalk paint from Waverly and I want to lighten it up so I add a little white to it and then I mix it up. I brush that on with a chalk paintbrush and it goes on beautifully. This shade of blue will add a vintage element to the decor. I'll also need three tumbling tower blocks which I paint blue as well and this is what's going to hold up and support the bunnies. I want to distress the wood. So with a coarsely grit sandpaper, I give it a light sanding focusing mainly on the edges. With a ruler, I mark where the bunnies are going to be placed, making sure they are evenly spaced out. I also lay out the bunnies like so, and that gives me an idea of how it's going to look when it's glued. I glue them in place. I apply hot glue on the tumbling block and on the bottom of the bunny. And I am done. Absolutely adorable. It's perfect for spring, and I love the combination of the blue and the jute cord. I just love how it turned out. For this project, I'm going to be using a couple frames from Dollar Tree, as well as this beautiful floral fabric from Dollar Tree as well. I'm going to start with a larger frame. I turn it over and I remove the backing board and the little cardboard inside. I'm going to cut the fabric to fit inside the frame, and so I use that cardboard as a template. So I cut out the fabric. Unfortunately, I did not pay attention to the direction of the pattern and I didn't position it correctly. I wanted the frame to stand vertically, not horizontally. So I had to recut it. There's a white foam around the frame, which I removed. I also won't be using the glass. Now that backing board is quite flimsy, so I glue that additional cardboard to strengthen it up. You can also replace that with a more sturdy foam board as well. And then I hot glue the fabric onto the board, making sure it's lying completely flat. I turn it over and I just trim out that excess fabric. I pop the fabric in the frame and close it up. Because I'm not putting the glass back in, there's going to be a little extra room in the back, so you can leave it, which I did, or you can fill it up with another layer of cardboard or secure it with a little bit of hot glue. But wow, look at that. I really love the fabric against the gold. For the smaller white frame, I'm going to be using this home sign left over from my last video, this Dollar Tree plank, which I cut in half for a prior project, and some scrap burlap. I place the backing board on top of the burlap, and then I cut that amount out. I'm going to glue the burlap on the board. There's some black metal popping out of it, so I just paint over that with some matching acrylic paint to conceal it. I place the burlap on top and hot glue it in place. To get the home sign to fit on the plank, I cut it in half and then I just touch up the areas needed with some black acrylic paint. I paint the plank with some leftover sample paint that I have. This is Sea Frost from Glidden. It's a beautiful light tone gray. I trim out the excess burlap and then I place that back in the frame and I secure the tabs. And then I glue the home sign in place, placing the letters vertically with the HO on top and the ME on the bottom. I add some hot glue to the back of the plank and place that right in the center of the burlap frame. All right, and that is it for this DIY. I'm really happy with how these frames turned out. They look so beautiful together and they really complement each other well. I'll be using this photo frame from Dollar Tree. I want this frame to be able to display some flowers or stems. So for this project, I will be using one giant popsicle stick, about seven square dowels, and four tumbling tower blocks. The popsicle stick is going to be part of the base, so I stand the frame up and I place a popsicle right in front of it. And then I place a tumbling block on top, one on each side of the frame. 
Then I mark the distance the block extends out to, as well as the width of the frame, and I trim the popsicle stick accordingly. I also measure, mark, and trim the square dowels. These are from Amazon, they're balsa wood, and these are best trimmed or sliced with a craft knife. In place of that, you can also use round dowels as well as skewers. Once everything has been trimmed, I'm going to brush over with some white acrylic paint. Now I don't want this to be too opaque. I do want the wood underneath to be seen just to match the frame, so I just brush over it lightly. I paint the rest of the wood, the popsicle stick, and the tumbling blocks, and I make sure to leave one side of the blocks unpainted. Once everything is dried, I'm going to go ahead and glue the blocks on top of the popsicle sticks first before gluing it onto the frame. So I'm using some wood glue and I glue two blocks on each end. And it's going to look like a U. Now I'm not sure what happened to my footage, but to attach the pieces together, I used a combination of hot glue and E6000. I can tell that the frame material may not hold well with hot glue and could possibly even come loose over time. Next, I glue the dowels down, I place the first one towards the bottom, and then I glue the top, and then the middle. I'm just trying to space them out evenly. Now you can glue down more or less dowels, either way, I'm sure it will look nice. I'm going to leave the string and beads the way it is. You can snip it off or even paint the beads. You can also hang this, there's a place that will hold the screw on the back, or you can hot glue some rope. But for this, I'm going to have it stand upright. You can place some flowers or stems inside, or use it as an organizer as well. For the next project, I'm going to be using this really cute wooden easel, which I got at Dollar Tree. I love the natural, light wood finish, and I think it'll look great for what I have planned. I want to give the easel a spring update. So I'll be using this adorable rub-on transfer from the sticker and stencil section at Dollar Tree. The colors are perfect for spring and I think they'll really make the project pop. So instead of cutting out the individual flowers, I decided to cover the entire easel with them. I simply laid the easel on top of the transfer sheet and scored the side to create an indentation where I'll need to cut. Then I trimmed out that part. After removing the white backing, I noticed that there was a bit of empty space on the bottom, so I went ahead and trimmed that out as well. Then I carefully placed the transfer on top of the easel, and I used a popsicle stick to rub the flowers onto the wood. I also held the popsicle stick on its side to cover more surface area. I carefully lift up one corner. Basically, you just want to keep rubbing over the flowers with a popsicle stick, carefully removing the plastic as you go. And if there are any areas that didn't come out completely, just go over them again until it's completely transferred. Then I take a little skewer and with a pointy side, I slowly go over the slots to remove that extra transfer. I'm going to be using this jute string, which I think I pulled out of a Dollar Tree wood sign and some wooden beads as well as this mini clothespin. I string through the wooden beads, making sure there's enough space in the center for the little clothespin. I hot glue the ends on the back, and there you have it. A beautiful piece that's perfect for spring. to make some textured Easter eggs using this pack of plastic eggs from Dollar Tree. I didn't want to buy any more paint because I knew I had a lot, so I went through what I had and I wanted the shades to be muted or pastel shades and as long as I had white paint, I knew I could easily lighten up any color. For the first one, I'm going to use this pretty pink color from Apple Barrel. It's called Cameo Pink and to thicken it up, I add some baking soda and I mix that up. And to thicken it up even more, I add some spackle to the mixture. When this mixture dries, it will leave a beautiful texture that looks like concrete. I lightly sand the plastic so that the paint will adhere better, and then I apply a little hot glue on the rim to seal it shut. I also snip off that little plastic hinge. Now some of the eggs don't have a hole in it to stick a skewer through it, like this one, so I stuck a needle on this one instead, 
which I kind of preferred so that you don't have to worry about covering it up later. Or you can certainly make that hole bigger to fit a skewer right through it. So with a foam brush, I paint on the mixture and I will be painting this on thick. And once I am done, you will not be able to tell that this was a plastic Easter egg. I'm going to paint two coats of the mixture or at least touch up any areas needed after the first coat. So I let it dry between coats. Now to expedite drying time, use a heat gun, or if you don't have one, you can also use a blow dryer. Next, I do the same process for this gorgeous yellow chalk paint from Waverly. I mix in the baking soda and the spackle. This plastic egg had a hole on the bottom and top, so I was able to stick a skewer right through it. To cover up the hole, I did have to put a little spackle over it and then paint right over it. The mixture just could not cover it up. It just kept falling in. Such a pretty color. I make another mixture with a shade of gray from Apple Barrel. I really like this color because it made the plastic egg look like concrete when it dried. That's pretty much it for this one. It's my little hack for making Easter eggs look like concrete. I think these all came out so pretty. You can definitely display these in a basket or that adorable wooden box from DIY number two. It definitely adds a beautiful touch of spring to your home. For this project, I will be using this bunny silhouette from Dollar Tree. I'll be covering up the holes with some spackle. I want to add some dimension and give it a distressed look. So with a sanding sponge, I sand around the edges. And to scratch it up a little bit more, I use a coarse grit sandpaper. I take some jute string and I wind it around the neck a couple of times and I just tie it in the back to secure it. To make a bow, I first snip a piece of string about 5 inches or so. Then I take some more string and I wrap it around my hand about 3-4 to four times. I slide it out, pinch it together in the center. And I add a little bit of glue and I wind that extra string around a couple times. I secure the back with hot glue. Before I place that down, I'm going to place a couple of these greenery, which I pulled out of some Dollar Tree stems, and I glue them down on the jute. I'm keeping this very simple, but you can certainly embellish with more greenery and flowers as well, or you can even add a larger bow. Then I glue the bow right in the center of that. It's so cute. I'm going to display the bunny on an easel. This is just an old wooden easel that I've had, but you can also get these at Dollar Tree and paint it white or just keep it natural. Just like the bunny, I distress the edges a bit. I decided to place that hello sign I made from the prior DIY on the bunny, and I think it adds a little more character to it. And that's it for this one. I really love how adorable this little bunny turned out. I purchased this wooden tray from Dollar Tree and I start off by sanding it. There were some rough areas so it needed a good sanding to prep it for the next step. I'm going to stain it using Minwax in dark walnut but you can also paint it as well. So I apply that all over but one thing with staining Dollar Tree wood decor pieces, the areas where the glue has dried, usually in the joints, those areas do not hold a stain. But since I will be distressing the tray, it works because I do want a natural worn out look in the end. After I apply the stain and let that dry, I lightly brush on white chalk paint. Then I sand the whole thing down with sandpaper and a sanding block. I want to dull down the stain and leave a few brush strokes here and there and that will give it a beautiful rustic look. I got this flower sticker pack from Dollar Tree. It came with six large stickers over six inches wide. It's so pretty. I'm going to place it in the center of the tray and it's pretty much going to cover most of the surface. When laying that down, I make sure it goes down smoothly with no air bumps and I make sure the ends are completely sealed. It is so large. I love how it spills over to the sides. To elevate the tray, I'm going to add the Dollar Tree wooden cubes to the bottom. I stain, paint, and sand it just like the tray, and then I glue them down to the bottom. 
And finally, I add a coat of mint wax polyacrylic just to protect the tray and the flower. And that is it, such a dramatic transformation. So rustic and beautiful, and the flower adds a charming touch. When I was at Dollar Tree, I was looking for a metal bunny wreath frame, but my store didn't have it. So instead, I grabbed this tinsel wrapped bunny, and I will be wrapping the bunny with this jute cord. So I'm going to remove the white tinsel. It's actually really easy to take out because it's not glued. It's just wrapped around these plastic tabs, so it does come out quite easily without any hassle. And underneath is a plastic frame of a bunny. I'm going to remove the middle portion of the frame, and I'm using these diagonal pliers to cut through the plastic. I tried with scissors, but it was just taking a little too long to cut through, so this worked pretty well. I also trimmed off those plastic tabs that were sticking out. And then I just start wrapping. I start with the ears and I add a little hot glue on the top and then I just wrap it all the way down, adding a dab of hot glue here and there to secure it in place. Now once I get to the top of the bunny head, I wrap it and then I snip off the cord and hot glue it on the back. And then I wrap the other ear the exact same way. Of course, you can really start anywhere, but you just want to make sure to cover the plastic frame. And I'm loving how this is looking already. I'm going to embellish with the stems of mini flowers from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to hot glue them around the bottom portion or the bunny face. So I just bend the stems to match the shape, and then I place them down and secure it with a little bit of hot glue. Now I really like it just like that with these little flowers. It's very simple and beautiful, but you can definitely embellish with some more flowers and add a bow to it as well. And then I just attach a ribbon to hang. And that's it. This adorable DIY is done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy these quick and easy spring DIYs. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my new videos. Until next time, bye!